then into Thursday we're by Drastic ways to take revenge by workers at war later tonight at 10.45 after police work now on BBC One Crime Watch UK with Nick Ross and Jill Dando. you think it is that makes you suspicious that it might be him then? Thanks very much, studio. Can we stand by for transmission? We have some fantastic results from last month's programme, including on the Michael Menson murder, which has been compared to the Stephen Lawrence case. But first, a bizarre crime, rip-off artists, literally. Yes, it's the great art robbery at York. When you work in a gallery, people are coming in and out all the time. It's a relaxed atmosphere. And you don't realize that something can happen. And when it does, it, it takes you completely by surprise. I'm afraid it's locking up time, sir. Can you make your way to the downstairs exit? No, no, no. Normally, if you ask people to leave the gallery, they do follow you out. The chap that I'd seen had disappeared, so I went to the far end, and that's when they came out. Over here, now. Move it. On your knees, hands behind your back. Who else is in the gallery, mate? Just two downstairs. Oh, I, I suppose the bloke out the back's a ghost, is he? Come on! Well, I was shocked. It, it was fries, I think, more than anything, because you've got two guns pointing at you, and then they start telling you what to do. And at that point, you're at their mercy. What's going on? What's it look like? Come on, you. Back this way. Oh, there you are. I was wondering where you'd gone. Back off! <laughs> Is this some kind of joke? I don't see anyone laughing, do you? Fight! On the floor! Not again! Come on! Fight now! When we were actually put into the exhibition room and laid on the floor and tied, one of the first things I thought was, I'm going to be late here. <laughs> Quite an unusual thing, I don't doubt, to, to come up with, but I think it was its body's own way of cutting out the more traumatic part of the occurrence. Of the two, the smaller one was more aggressive. Just keep calm. Come on, just keep, just keep calm and hope you get hurt, right? In his movements and, and the way he spoke to us, he was quite frightening. Now you know we're serious. I think that was the most frightening time of the ordeal. Then you knew it could have used a gun. Hello? 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 Hello. <laughs> I thought it was a fancy dress party. Think it's bloody funny, do you? 
See how funny you find it on the floor with your mates. Then I realised it was for real and I started to say my prayers. He was away deciding what to take. One of my favourites was a Turner watercolour. And because of the necessity to keep light from a watercolour painting, we had that item in a case. We do get attached to the items we're looking after. And we felt afterwards that they'd taken part of us away from the gallery. They may not be owned by us, but we have an affinity with the paintings. You get to know them, you get to like them. They may have damaged the actual paintwork, of course, because as soon as you start to manoeuvre them and especially take them out of the frames, you've got to really be very careful and know what you are doing with them. The one that was cutting the paintings from the frames was a nasty piece of work. He was very, very nervous. When he came back, we were all frightened of him. Right. Which are the most expensive paintings, then? Apart from the ones in the gold frames? You missed them, mate. <laughs> you should have been here a fortnight since, when they had the canalitos. It's lucky I'm in here with you, not Bert. I'm the good guy of the two of us. Wouldn't even be here if I had my way. We didn't hear anything for quite a while. So we assumed that he was doing the damage downstairs. Someone who knew about paintings and loved paintings wouldn't have damaged them in the way they did. I'd made a mess of them. That's it, Tony. We're about ready for off. About time and all. It was in my mind, at what point are they going to let me go? I didn't know what was going to happen. They did things to me that shouldn't happen. Right. That's it. All over. We're out of here. They can see you, they know you, but you don't know them. And my anger is for what they did to the gallery. Um, because we've got to work here. And I thought that was totally wrong. Well, Det Detective Inspector Phil Metcalf, I mean, these, these robbers just walked out bold as brass, didn't they, into an evening rush hour in York? Yes, that's correct. York being a tourist city, uh, we believe there'd be a number of tourists about in the area. Obviously, local people are aware of this robbery, but people who are tourists may not be. I would appeal for any of those people to come forward if they can help us with our inquiries. And they would have had black holders at about, what, half past five on the 22nd of January? Yes, that's correct. Any other clues you have at all? Yes, the robbers took with them some ties and some uh, masking tape or parcel tape, which we believe were probably purchased locally. They had a large number of ties, which they used to tie up the, uh, the victims. In addition, they threatened to gag them with the, with the tape, but they never used the tape. Mm. But the main, the main appeal is the paintings. There's, there's still 20 paintings. They have 20 reasons to chances. believe that we're going to, going to catch them. Yeah. Um, so I would appeal to anybody who knows where these paintings are to contact us. Okay. Well, Richard Green is the curator of the uh, art gallery. Now, presumably, this was the most uh, recognisable and therefore the most valuable. Well, Turner is certainly the most important artist represented in, in the, the raid. This is a very beautiful watercolour of Revo Abbey, painted in the 1820s. Very, very vulnerable. We're terribly worried about its fate out in the world. Without the protection of its frame, for it was crudely smashed from its frame and is now a, a, a precious scrap of coloured paper somewhere in the world. There was a, a sicket of old Heffel, a, a violinist, painted early in the 20th century, 
and of more local relevance, a view of the Dean's Park in York, painted by Algernon Newton in the 1940s. Not one of the most famous artists, and indeed, uh, most of the artists represented were not, not famous names, but they were works, they're works of great art historical interest, and they contributed so much to the range and breadth of our collection. Mm. Phil, briefly, £25,000 reward. Who are you particularly appealing to? Well, I believe these paintings are still local or still in the country. I don't think they can get rid of them. Uh, they're too hot to handle at this moment in time. So I would appeal to anybody who may be offered them or who may know where they are to contact us straight away. Right, thank you very much indeed. Well, if you're offered any of those pictures at a car boot sale or an antique sale, whatever, or if you've heard rumours about those gunmen, please do let us know. 0500 600 600. And there's a local number too. 01904 669 389. That's York 669 389. An urgent appeal from Thames Valley Police who need to find Philip Poole Warren. He's wanted in connection with a rape in Milton Keynes ten days ago. They believe that he now represents a serious danger to women. He's six feet tall, he's 42 years old, and incidentally, he smokes an unusual brand of cigarettes. They're American, Dickens and Grant. If you know him, ring us now on 0500 600 600 or call the incident room on 01 908 276 183. That's Milton Keynes 276 183. In fact, since our last programme, there have been two convictions and eight arrests, some of those arrests as a direct result of calls to Crime Watch. Peter Derrick Jones has been given life for 13 child sex offences. He was caught in Essex after viewers called the studio last August. And the man we showed in an off-licence last May, well, he got named by half a dozen Crime Watch viewers. And the murder in London two years ago of Michael Menson, you may recall that last month, his sister made a direct appeal. We are going to catch them, so they have to get in touch with us. They have to give us the information, because we're not going to stop unless all this is brought to closure. Well, she and the rest of the appeal provoked a huge response. Hundreds of viewers, including several hardened criminals, came through with information and good information. We've got names. We now know it was petrol that set her brother on fire on the North Circular Road in Edmonton. And if you rang from a phone box on Silver Street in Edmonton on Monday last week, and gave details of a metro car, please, please, if you really want to help, just call again. You don't have to give your name, you don't have to give too many details. The number here, 0500 600 600. Three new faces now, and first, someone wanted on a charge of rape. It happened in West Yorkshire last July, and the victim was a 15-year-old schoolgirl. This is Ali Samadi, and he uses other names, such as Mario Cucciari and Youssef Amrani. He's from Morocco, but may be able to put on different accents. He's 5 foot 11 and 31 years old with a scar on his right cheek. But even more distinctive, on the right eye, the white intrudes into the iris. But you'd have to be close to see to him to see that. Ali Samadi may have connections on the continent, but might be living in the British Isles. Ring us at the studio on 0500 600 600 or the local police on free call number 0500 040 999. That's 0500 040 999. Next, someone described as very unpredictable and violent. He's called Junior Lewis Otway, also known as Junior Solomon Lamb. He looks very young, doesn't he? In fact, he is only 18, but be very wary of harbouring him. He's wanted for questioning for attempted murder, kidnapping, blackmail, forced imprisonment and woundings. Call us here in the studio on 0500 600 600 or the local incident room on 0161 856 4246. That's 0161 856 4246. And still in Manchester, a murder that happened last September. Jason Moratia was stabbed one evening in an alleyway off Dale Street after an argument. Now we've CCTV from Piccadilly Station in Manchester taken the same night and this could be the attacker. He's in his teens or early 20s and 5 foot 10. He's wearing distinctive clothing and likes his labels. The caps are Nike and the fleece top is Reebok. Call the local police on 0161 856 4032. That's Manchester 856 4032. Or if you recognise any of the people we've shown, then please call our studio number on 0500 600 600. Well over 90% of murders are eventually solved. But the killing of a schoolgirl in North London has defied detection for a year. Tonight, there's a chance to prick someone's conscience. Someone must be able to fill in the gaps in what detectives know about the life and death of Hannah de Turville. Oh, 
Hannah. Oh, come on, Mum. Can explain why your loving makes me weak. I get so weak in the knees. I can hardly speak. I lose all control when it's something it takes over me. In a day, it is so well Hannah, made. can you go to the wool shop for me and get some of that gold thread so I can finish this off? Yeah, OK, Mum. Today she wanted to be a doctor, tomorrow an actor, you know, the next day she wanted to be a singer. She was young, so um, at the end of the day, it's like the world is her oyster. She wanted to do everything. You arguing outside? Yeah, the guy's mad. What are you arguing about? Nothing. What can I get you anyway? Some gold thread. <laughs> okay. When does school start back? Monday. Listen, Hannah, do you want me to call you a cab? No. I'll pay for it if you like. No, I'll be all right. It was the day after New Year's Day. If you knew who might have been arguing with Hannah, please call to eliminate this incident from the murder inquiry. And every shopkeeper in the area knew Hannah. Um, she was popular, but she's got this aura that, you know, she makes friends very easily. I, I, I felt proud, you know, to be her mum. I, I still am. What do you think? You look great. <laughs> Mum, can I go out tonight? All right. As long as you're not back late, OK? Thanks, Mum. Do you want anything done? Can I get you anything? No, I'm fine. Don't forget your keys. Yeah. Hannah left her home in 6th Avenue to go and meet a friend nearby. No one knows what happened after that, unless you can help. Hannah disappeared. OK. OK. But deep down, the anxiety was there. I was trying to, like, live in hope that, you know, she's going to walk through the door because there's no need for her not to come home. About seven miles away, near Perryvale, is Horsenden Hill. This is early January last year. Do you remember being there one Sunday morning? I got about halfway up and I saw three uh, black guys coming down the hill. Um, I was sort of a bit wary. Well, it was just unusual to see, you know, three men without a dog or children or anything up there in that sort of weather. It's was unusual, so I just avoided them. These men are very likely unconnected with Hannah de Turville, but police need to trace them to be sure. The importance of Horsenden Hill became clear three weeks after Hannah disappeared. The area is often used by gay men, and some may be crucial witnesses. London Lesbian and Gay Switchboard, how can I help you? Yeah, I know Horsenden Hill, it's off the A40. Are you sure? Don't worry, this is a confidential service. And you found it? From the concrete post, 150 metres in a southeasterly direction. Down the hill, shrubs begin. Where it levels out, and the body, you say, is in the wooded bit. Hannah had been stabbed repeatedly, as though in an outburst of anger. It's like every time I see a mother and daughter, I envy, you know, that mother. She's still with me, you know. She, she's as if she's still, you know, here. Then my, my, my memories will never fade. She's, she's there. Brian Pender is now running what's regarded as one of the most difficult murder investi investigations possible. Who do you hope, who are you hoping will come through tonight? 
Nick, I would uh, hope to appeal to uh, friends of Hannah's who have not yet uh, contacted us, those friends of uh, Hannah's who have been in touch with us and have yet more information to give us, and particularly to the anonymous male who rang the Gay and Lesbian Switchboard on Friday the 23rd of January 1998. His contribution is vital and I can guarantee him that he'll be treated with sympathy and discretion. Now, over a year later, the truth is, I mean, going through some of the clues you've got, and they're very, very fragile, they're, they're very slight. That is correct. In fact, there are probably about nine features, in fact, uh, that exist in relation to the person that we want, and I would be looking to identify about four of them tonight. We're looking for somebody who's familiar with the area of Harrow Road, familiar with the area of Horsenden Hill, likely to have known or met with Hannah in the past, a person with access to vehicles, who may have shown violence in the past, and a person who, over that weekend of the 2nd of January, would have been heavily bloodstained and destroyed that clothing, who may have been uh, involved in the extensive cleaning of premises or a vehicle that may have been heavily bloodstained, who may have confided in someone, and who may have behaved strangely since that time. So if anybody can put four of those features together, you want them to call? Certainly. The, the family, of course, have been left in turmoil and, and will be until this is solved. That is correct, Nick. Uh, the murder of young Hannah was a dreadful act of violence. Such crimes as this strike at the very heart of our community. And in essence, the whole of society becomes a victim. None of us can understand the pain and suffering that June's family have gone through and that her friends are experiencing. And I would appeal to anyone who can assist in any way to provide the pieces that complete the picture to come forward and help us. Okay, there is uh, a reward, if that would help. £10,000 has been put up by the police for this. As I say, it's been a desperate time for the de Terville family. If you know something, if you know anything, give us a call, 0500 600 600. That comes direct to Brian Pender and his colleagues here in the studio. Now, I should say we've been having a technical problem with some of our phones tonight, and if you are having a difficulty getting through, please persevere and try later. Or, in this case at least, and we'll give you other numbers in a moment, on this case you can try the incident room in London on 0181 358 1871. That's 0181 358 1871. Well, now we go back 20 years to a murder case, one where the victim has never been identified. In October 1979, the body of a young woman was found in Bedgebury Forest in Kent. She'd been bludgeoned to death. Well, we showed the dress that she was wearing on Crime Watch back in 1984. And success, a viewer from Stratford-on-Avon who made the dress called us, but she'd given it to a charity shop in Evesham, Worcestershire, and police were unable to trace it after that. Well, thanks to new forensic techniques, they now have a much better image of the young woman. There she is, 20 years ago. She was between 25 and 35, with hazel eyes, light brown hair, and rather prominent teeth. Well, Dave Stevens is trying to find out who she was. Are you getting any closer 20 years on, Dave? Yes, I think we are. Uh, the investigation's been reopened because of forensic uh, developments, particularly in the field of DNA. Um, we uh, have progressed quite substantially, but uh, one thing we haven't done is been able to ID her, identify her. Well, we've been given some features, obviously. Any other identifying features? Um, there are some substantial identifying features. She had uh, prominent teeth, which were rather decayed. Um, we believe she was quite short, about five foot one. Uh, she was suffering from a, an eptopic pregnancy, uh, which would have caused her some distress, I think, at the time. And we do know that she'd given birth uh, in the past to at least one child. Now, we've had some information on the clothes. As we've said, this is the dress that she was wearing when, when, she, was di when she died. Have you any other information on it since then? Yes, the dress has been substantially altered. It's been made smaller. The hemline has been taken up. Uh, the zip has been taken out of the back and a rather distinctive uh, lace collar, white lace collar, has been fitted to the dress. So someone may remember that being done I think in 78, so, 79. Yes. Any idea where she could have come from or what she did? Yes, there are some clues to that. Uh, we think she may have been a prostitute working uh, in uh, the London area, particularly the Spitalfields Market area. We also think that she may have hitched lifts uh, on the M1 or the M6, travelling north or back down south again. And because of the origins of the dress, we also think it's possible that she may have connections with the Vale of Evesham. Well, we hope that someone may uh, remember someone who's been missing for 20 years, hopefully. Quite so. The descriptions we've given obviously are 20 years old. Mm -hmm. So anybody that uh, can think of anybody of that description who they haven't seen for 20 years, 
we'd very much like to hear from. Dave, let's hope so. Thank you very much indeed. Well, the call costs nothing if you ring us in the studio and you can get through. Do keep trying. 0500 600 600. Or the incident room. Perhaps that's better at the moment. 01622 654 850. That's Maidstone. 654 850. I've been looking at some crimes caught on camera, one in Inverness, but let's start in Cheshire. Now here's a team who are really brutal. This is a jewellers in Crewe just 18 months ago, in case you're wondering, the staff are sheltering around the back. A wise move as the robbers were carrying a pistol as well as a sledgehammer. Last November, in the same jewellers, there was a very similar attack, but this time there were more of them, four in fact, and they were after Rolex watches. You couldn't see anyone's faces on that video, but concentrate on these next two men, seen three days before that last robbery in Nantwich and four miles away from Crewe. One of them went into a jewellery shop and showed interest in Rolex watches. The picture is poor, but we think he is just recognisable. If you have any information, please ring us here in the studio, 0500 600. 600 or you could try the local police on 01244 613333 that's Chester 613333 next to Inverness and the awful rape of a 13 year old girl at the Aquadome Leisure Centre last August the victim said the man was called Carl and that he was from somewhere Abbey this is one of the water rides and this lad may have some crucial evidence. He's 15 to 17 years old with short dark brown hair, green blue eyes and he was suntanned then, of course it was the summer. We've been checking the possibility that he arrived in a group and this Toyota Land Cruiser could be relevant. But we need to know whose it is. The number to ring is 0500 600 600 or the local police again on 01463 720 200. That's Inverness 720 200. Last year there was a vicious assault on a woman in her 70s at her home in Kenilworth in Warwickshire. She's a redoubtable lady who stood her ground as best she could, but the violence was so bad that what you'll see is actually fairly sanitised. Young bird of prey. How many left? Five. Are you getting with those? <laughs> Much higher yet. 70 are still listed missing. The interior minister said, whole towns are drowning in mud. Rivers of mud swept with terrifying speed across the low-lying Campania region from Caserta, north of Naples, down to the coastal town of Salerno. Yeah. Uh -huh. Who is it? Who is it? Who are you? I'm the son of your neighbour. She needs your help. You're you're not her son. I'm if you want a son, go down to the British Legion. That's I'm sorry, I can't really hear you. Can you open the door properly? I'm not opening this door. You're not her son. Go to the British Legion if you want a son. The force was such that he tore the security fitting out of the door frame. Give me your money. What Where's your money? money? I, I haven't got any money. I was fighting him, and he put his foot on my chest. And uh, I, I didn't know what was happening. I was trying to fight like mad, and then he dragged me up, and he kept on. I'll oh, kill you, I'll kill you if you don't give me your money. The court, the emergency cord, and I pulled it. The alarm is linked to a council warden who alerted the woman's family. Meanwhile, she ran out onto the street. Help me! Help me! Couldn't understand why I hadn't stopped, you know. Just didn't take it in that they'd gone straight past her. I thought they were taking no notice. I was petrified. Help me! He came out and dragged me back in and started battering me again. Tell me where you keep the money! In my shopping bag in the kitchen. Police believe her attacker went around the corner to the Cottage Inn. <laughs> uh, double whiskey, coke and a cigar. Do you want ice with that? Yeah. Where's the best place to go taxi from here? Try the phone. Where are you going to? Uh, Warwick University. There's a list on the wall by the phone at the end of the bar there.
Yeah, I need a taxi to uh, Warwick University. Uh, where are we? Oh, what's the address? Kenilworth. Kenilworth. in Kenilworth. Oh, don't worry about it. Um. Yeah, I need a taxi to Warwick University. Anyway, where are we again? No, we're at the cottage in Kenilworth. It's written on that lighter, all right? The, the cottage in Kenilworth. Yeah. An hour. Oh. I'm dead. Look, can somebody take me to the university? Oh, come on, look, I'll give somebody a tenner if they can take me to the university. They all kept turning their heads and trying to ignore him. The man started to get all panicky and he was walking around really nervous. Oh, come on, it's going to take ten minutes. Gran? You're in a rush, lad. Yeah, I've got to be back to the university. I've got to be up early in the morning. I've got to reset. Look, why don't you let me ring a cab for you, OK? I wouldn't say it was totally out of the question that he was a, a university student, but I would have had my money on him not being one. I don't know where to He was about 26 years old, maybe younger, clean-shaven, fair, short hair. He was about 5'10 and quite thin. Come on, Grant, let's have a look. Come on, let me see. To the university? Uh, yeah, just by the university. No, actually, uh, just a Barrows Club in Coventry. I know. Was he really undecided? Was he laying a false trail? Was he looking for drugs? Look, just drop me off here, OK? At any rate, he finished in the Stoke Heath area of Coventry. Well, it's a horrible case, and it seems unlikely to be a one-off either, so it needs your call to stop it happening again. 0500 600 600 or 01926 415 662. That's Leamington Spa, 415 662. We're still having a problem with the phones, and our apologies about that. But uh, let me tell you about uh, two reappeals from last month's programme. Both had a really strong response, but they still haven't come up with the goods. The East London stalker who's been terrorising his victim for 18 months. No matter where you are in the house, you're wondering, even if he hasn't come for a day or two or a week. And the longer he stays away, you just think, what is he going to do next? What is he going to do next? And in fact, the night after Crime Watch, the stalker reappeared outside her house. He's making her life a misery. If you've any idea who he is, call us now on 0500 600 600. And the gruesome murder of a man whose body was found last December on the foreshore of the Thames in Deptford. If you can help identify him, please call us here at 0500 600 600 and please persevere. Well, as Nick said, we, do, we are still having uh, problems with the phones, but please do persevere. Only about 25% of them are working. Please ring the incident room if you've got a problem. And uh, if you've forget, forgotten those numbers, then you can find them on CFAX, page 621. Well, more crime caught on camera, and this was a one-in-a-million traffic accident. It happened on a Sunday afternoon last month as Danny Sargent was driving on the M25 in Surrey going east. His car windscreen was hit by an object, and he was killed. And this is what hit him. It's part of a brake drum and it could possibly have come from this lorry. It's a Leyland DAF 85 tractor with semi-trailer. It's white with a name written on the wind deflector and it looks as though the driver was wearing a yellow fluorescent jacket. He may be unaware and we think it may be a sign of bad maintenance and we need to trace the vehicle for the sake of Danny's family. Please ring us here at the studio on 0500 600 600 or call the incident room on 01483 482248. That's Guildford 482248. As you can see, perhaps behind me, the phones now do seem to be buzzing again, so I hope that problem's done with. Now, suddenly, and it really has been a sudden process, rapes are being linked together and solved. New police and forensic techniques are making it possible to return to cases that can be decades old. And we now go back to 1987 and at least five attacks over a 20 month period. They happened in Portsmouth in Hampshire. Did the rapist stop then or did he move on and find new victims elsewhere? Even though it has been 10 years, you don't 
forget. You push it deep down, but it will come back. Something triggers it off and the memory comes back. Twelve years ago, at the time when the new Portsmouth motorway was being built, a 17-year-old went to Hilsey Ramparts to feed her horse. As she was leaving the field, she was dragged off her moped and raped. She was so traumatised, she was unable to give a description of her attacker. Ten months later, the week before Christmas in Portsmouth Centre, a victim now in her 20s, then a child of 13. I'd actually finished my paper round, and um, before we finish it around, we always have to come back to the shop and bring our newspaper bags back. I noticed someone in the alleyway, and he was in um, a doorway, and I saw him flick his cigarette down to the floor. We did have a workman's jacket on, a distinctive big jacket. I got some brilliant tips and loads of cards. Look, much more than last year. I had my hands full with cards, so it was more difficult for me to, to control my bike. I was just three quarters of the way down the alley. I, I didn't notice the, the man again in the doorway, and I do remember looking. His grip on her face was like iron, as though he knew what he was doing. I can remember this rough hand and smell of alcohol, the smell of cigarettes. I couldn't take his hand away from my mouth to shout, to scream. I couldn't, I couldn't do anything because he held me so tightly. Can I go now? Can I go home now? And I just said, please don't hurt me, don't kill me. And he punched me in the face. And he just said, be quiet, be quiet. And I knew then it would hurt me if I didn't do what he said. Turn round. Turn round properly. That's right. How long are you going to stay there for? Forever. That's right. You stay there. If the rapist wasn't local, he certainly knew where to take his victim. This old air raid shelter is hidden away behind London Road. A few weeks later, and from a child victim to an adult, this time, she was ambushed at the scene of an earlier rape at Hilsey Ramparts. Although I moved away from the centre of the path, I continued my brisk pace and tried to ignore him, but he moved swiftly in front of me and literally stopped me in my tracks. He grabbed hold of my right arm just above my wrist with his left hand, and I then felt him touching my stomach with what I was certain was a knife. You all right to carry on, love? Once you've checked your witness statement, we'll get you home, all right? At that point, I can recall hearing what I thought was a police siren coming from the M27. I then screamed as hard as I could twice. <coughs> I would describe my attacker as follows. 34 years, late 30s, six foot tall, athletic build, mid-brown wavy hair, his face was oval shaped. His eyes were almond-shaped and a grey-brown in colour. When he bent down to kiss me, I felt some stubble on his face. He smelt of alcohol. Was he a construction worker, a builder or labourer of sorts? Does he always have a knife? Does he punch his wife or girlfriends in the face? And ten years ago, why wasn't he at work at two o'clock on a Monday afternoon in summer? This time, his intended victim was a mother with her children on a rural lane near Portsdown Hill. This time, even though he had a knife, she managed to fight him off. And this time, he had a car. All we know about it is it was dark metallic blue. Four months later, his victim this time was aged 14. That night I was with one of my friends and she walked me halfway home. She always done that. I was stood there for about five, ten minutes having a chat. Just a normal night, really. I'm like just saying goodbye. When I turned round, saw someone behind, I thought at first it was a woman in a dress. I think I was hoping it was a woman. Come here. Come on. It was quite a big man because the size of his hands when he put them in my mouth covered most of my face. Put it out of your head. He brought me round to the car. I remember it to me being navy. I told me to keep the shit over my face. I said, cover your head up. Where'd you live? Hillsea. 
Is there a light on there? Yeah. Yeah, I think I've been there a couple of times. I remember there were some boots under the car seat. They seemed to be like workman's boots because they was either covered in either mud or paint, something hard. I remember there being some sort of seat belt. It was black, it had a red stripe. When the car had stopped, I knew he was going to do something to me. I was really frightened, just wanting to be with my family. He eventually dropped me off at Purbrook. Come on in. Put that coat over your head. Come on. Keep that coat over here till I've gone. Picture had a terrifying set of attacks suddenly stopped, all in Portsmouth 10, 11, 12 years ago. People must remember somebody who fits the description who was violent from that time. Well, we're looking for a very, very violent man. Very vicious, ruthless attacks on a 13 and 14 year old girl, particularly, who were viciously, physically assaulted and then sexually assaulted. I would urge anyone that's listening to the programme tonight to ring in, particularly if they can recollect from 11 years ago, meeting someone either casually, or they may have known them intimately, and recognising the pattern of violence we've seen tonight. And I would urge him to ring in. OK. Or a prison officer, why did he stop? Is he in prison? Wherever he went. Anybody who recognises that pattern of violence, anyone who was attacked during that period, hasn't yet come forward. Please call us. We've uh, got an idea of what he would look like now. Was this your friend or your workmate, your boyfriend, your husband, someone who 11, 12 years ago was in Portsmouth? Call even if anonymously. Forensic easily eliminates innocent people. 0500 600 600. And if you're still having difficulty with getting an engaged tone, another number on this case, also a free phone, 0800 389 6390. That's 0800 389 6390. Now, two murders. First, an armed robber who absconded for prison back in 1992, but is also now wanted for in a murder inquiry. He's Kevin Lyons, but may use different names. He might be armed and dangerous, so please don't approach him. He's 37 and a slim 5 foot 10, and he's got a pointed nose and a London accent. He may be in the home counties or even possibly in Ireland. If you know him, please call us here in the studio 0500 600 600 or the local incident room on 0181 358 177. That's 0181 358 177. And four years ago, there was an argument among market traders in Blackwood in Gwent. In public, with lots of bystanders, Jaswant Singh Sandhu was shot at point blank range. We're looking for Mohammed Basharat, commonly known as Bobby. He's 27 years old, small at 5 foot 5, with a slim build and a bird tattoo on his right hand. He could have been abroad for a while, but now he may be in the Greater Manchester area. Call us now on 0500 600 600, or better still, try that 0161 856 9043. That's Manchester, 856 9043. Once again, our apologies for the problems we're having with the phones. They're not within this building. It's outside somewhere. It's intermittent, but uh, we'll give you some more numbers later on. Uh, before we close, we'd like to thank one man for our next appeal. Here he is. Uh, believe it or not, he's stealing the security camera. This is at Starbridge, west of Birmingham, about a couple of months ago. Who is he? Well, call the instant room on 0345 660 588, or if you can get through here in the studio, 0500 600 600. Uh, that number, of course, is good for any of our cases. Well, there are other Crime Watch numbers on CFAX page 621. Our email is crimewatch at the BBC. And if you call Crime Stoppers, if you prefer, us anonymously, 0800 treble 5 treble 1. And the victim support line, 0845 30 30 900. That will be open until 2 a.m. As for that camera thief, well, this was around Christmas time, so did he try to give you the camera as a present? We may have uh, his name by Crime Watch Update at 11.35. Join us and find out. And if you can't stay up till then, well, next month's Crime Watch is on Tuesday, March the 23rd. Don't have nightmares, please. Sleep well. Good night. Good night.